welcome to Winchester News Online, I'm Hannah Keegan. Today's top stories. Local MP defies government. I don't see myself as a rebel. I think to vote against your constituents was the rebellious position. Bournemouth, the latest to join Occupy movement. This isn't just local, this is uh, global. Kicking up a stink, new bin schedule fails residents. They've not responded and don't really seem to care about anything. And in sport, did Basingstoke Town enjoy cup success? As prices talks continue about the future of the Eurozone, Winchester MP Steve Bryan says he has no regrets about standing against the government on the issue of Europe. He was part of the biggest rebellion a Conservative government had ever seen. Julie Cordier has been to Westminster for an exclusive chat with the rebellious Member of Parliament. With the European crisis being at the centre of political concerns, MP Steve Bryan defended his stance on Europe. Ed Miliband called the rebellion a humiliation for the Tories. Ed Miliband has his own humiliations on a daily basis in this place. But let's be clear, Ed Miliband's party are split on this issue. I don't see myself as a rebel. I think if to vote against your constituents was the rebellious position in the vote last week. Look, I'm 37 years of age. I was teething the last time the British public were asked their view about Europe. We've got to stop being these reluctant partners in Europe. Either we're part of this club or we're not. We seem to be constantly at the moment dragged along, kicking and screaming, every new directive, every new idea from Europe. I think we should be in Europe, but not run by Europe. I do not want Britain to be part of a super state. I do not want it to be part of a political project. I don't agree with ever closer union. I think Britain has some benefits to being part of the European Union, but there is many um, non-benefits to that, and it's costing us billions of pounds a year for the privilege of it. Even if Steve Bryant stood up to those who don't want to revive this painful debate, he stretched that David Cameron still had his full support. Judy Cordier for Winchester News Online. Europe was also the focus of tension on Thursday night as question time came to Winchester. A panel including Nigel Farage, Ian Duncan Smith and others answered audience questions. Afterwards, Farage talked to Winnell. Uh, from the start, the whole thing was a misconstruction. Never, ever could Greece and Germany work together in the same economic and monetary union. That was never going to happen. Many of us predicted it. Those chickens are now coming home to roost. But what is now being done in the name of keeping the Eurozone going is a disaster for both the North and the South of Europe. For extended interviews with both Mr Farage and Mr Bryan, make sure you go to winalt.co.uk. From Wall Street to St Paul's, the Occupy movement has reached the South Coast. In the face of economic crisis, strikers have recently pitched tents in Bournemouth, making this one of the many camps in a protest that is gaining momentum. Ali Al Jamri reports. The 99%, as the protesters inspired by Occupy Wall Street call themselves, have set up in front of Bournemouth City Hall. Beginning their protest on Saturday, the protesters have already found themselves embraced by some and under fire by others. It was, it was Halloween last night and we had a few eggs over the yeah. heads, yeah, which is uh, pretty entertaining. Embittered by the failings of capitalism, the protesters are seeking change from the Western economic model. They're, corporations do not have people's best interest at heart. They have their shareholders. Though Occupy Bournemouth is still small, the organisers see themselves as one part of an international phenomenon. We hope to try and tell them that this isn't just local, this is uh, global. From every generation and walk of life, the protesters see themselves as part of a long-term movement. I mean, it may not even change in my lifetime, and it probably won't, but hopefully my kids will carry it on, and by the time my granddaughter's got her kids, it will have changed. But their work has only just begun. Ali Al Jumri, Winchester News Online, Bournemouth. Well, we also spoke to Ali earlier today for the latest update on this story. Bournemouth Council handed an eviction notice to the protesters late in the afternoon yesterday. There is to be a hearing this Friday, the 4th of November. The council states that it is their right as the landowner to issue an eviction and that they wish to remove the occupation before it has a negative impact on public services such as the 11 weddings due to take place at the town hall in the coming fortnight. 
We'll keep you updated as this situation progresses. Angry residents have complained to Winchester City Council after bins have failed to be collected just two weeks into a new waste services contract. Lee Jarvis has this story. Uncollected bins. A familiar sight in Winchester recently, despite being only two weeks into a new waste services contract with Biffa, hoping to save £2 million. 500 Winchester residents have complained to Winchester City Council as their bins have been left for weeks. Entire streets have been missed in some cases, leaving piles of rubbish and angry residents. It's awful really. We had a couple of collections to start off with and then it just turned to nothing. It's just mounting up in our house now because there's nowhere to put it outside. I've contacted um, the council a couple of times and they've not responded and don't really seem to care about anything. It's our business now to make sure our contractors deal with the backlog and collect on the prescribed days promptly. It'll take a little while to get organised, but it's a very efficient means of collecting rubbish. And I'd like to take the opportunity to apologise to residents who've been inconvenienced by, by not having their bins emptied at the, at the prepared time. With the backlog of rubbish expected to take to the end of this week to clear, residents can expect the service to be back to normal at the beginning of next week. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. And now we can go over to David with your sport. What have you got for us today, David? Some exciting FA Cup action this week, Hannah. Basingstoke reached the FA Cup first round proper in 2006, but at the weekend they had to get past tough opposition in the form of Staines Town to progress to the next round. Dale Gornall had the pleasure of being at the game. The first round proper of the FA Cup was reward for the victors of this clash between Basingstoke and Staines this weekend, and it was Basingstoke who started better with a flurry of early chances. First Sean McCauley coming close, and then Wes Daly having this effort saved. The pressure finally paid after 37 minutes, with Dragons defender Jay Gasson smartly finishing off here. Stain's bad luck continued as they failed to clear the ball here, which dropped kindly for Sean McCauley to poke in to make it 2-0. Yeah! Stain's were crying out for half-time to regroup, and it could have been worse had it not been for some great goalkeeping here to deny Stuart Lake. Staines were then handed a chance back into the game when Basingstoke were carved open, leaving Mark Charles-Smith to round the keeper to halve the deficit. This buoyed Staines into getting an equaliser, with the away side going close from a free kick here. And with the game almost over, they threw caution to the wind, even sending goalkeeper Louis Wells up for a corner. The corner was a poor one though, and this left Basingstoke attacking an empty net. However, Nathan Smart took a very heavy touch, allowing the goalkeeper to get back. It didn't matter though, as the final whistle blew, sending Basingstoke into the first round proper and sparking huge celebrations. Daryl Gorney, Winchester News Online. And that win for Basingstoke means they have a tricky away match against League One Brentford in the first round proper. AFC Totten beat Hanworth Villa 3 2 to progress and have been awarded a home match against Brentford Park Avenue. Ties are to be played on the 12th and 13th of November. Now to ice hockey, and Michael Connolly reports from the Planet Ice Arena to see if the Basingstoke Bison could end their poor form with a win against Manchester Phoenix. Manchester Phoenix were the visitors at the Planet Ice Arena this Saturday, and it was the visitors who had the early chances. But Basingstoke piled on the pressure in the first period. Victory in midweek giving them confidence which showed in their play. Only the post could stop Marcel Petran from grabbing the game's first goal. Basingstoke continued to create chances, but neither team could score in the first 20. And in the second period, it was Manchester who surprised the Bison, going 1-0 up through Tony Hand. But then Moria pulled one back soon after, making it one all going into the final period. And at 41 minutes, Moria put the Bison ahead. But they were unable to hold the lead, and less than a minute later, a defensive mix-up saw the Phoenix draw level. The Bison netminder almost kept the Phoenix from going ahead, but Archer made it 3-2. Single then put some daylight between the two teams, his shot somehow slipping under skins in the net. And into the final last minute, with an extra man attacking on the ice for the Bison, all hope was lost when Faith skated through to get the fifth goal. The game ending 5-2 to Manchester Phoenix. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. And finally from sport this week, Winchester City have done it, Basingstoke Town have done it, and now it's back. 
In this preview, Mikey Smith was at the Silver Lake Stadium to see if Eastley were up for the Winner Woodwork Challenge. Yeah, Danny Smith, let's go. Oh, well away, Dave. You've got to try and hit the crossbar. Skinny, defender. Time, Bill. Dave Wilson, FIFA kick. Ben is at the winner woodwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's all for your sport this week. Back to you, Hannah. Thank you for that, David. £1.4 million is the sum recently given to the University of Southampton. The grant is to be used on laser technology, hoped to aid in medical and manufacturing advances as well as communication. Tom Morgan reports. The University of Southampton has received a £1.4 million grant that will help academics and students study photonics, the science of light. The grant will help fund research into the applications of high-powered lasers. The University of Southampton's fibre drawing tower is able to create materials containing the laser atoms. Lasers have a number of uses in the world of communication, data storage, manufacturing and healthcare. The investigating team are looking forward to seeing how their research will change the future of the field. The research is key to the whole programme of photonics and the flexibility this grant will produce is invaluable in these days where getting research and money itself is quite hard. Everything you do in the modern world is about photonics. Uh, we keep thinking we, we know it all, uh, we don't. It's a really big deal. Issued by the EPSRC, the money will also fund tests that, if successful, could enable rapid diagnosis of diseases such as malaria and flu. Tom Morgan, Winchester News Online. And finally, Win All Life is back this week with even more exciting features and, of course, a prestigious guest. Elizabeth Barnett, the editor of Hampshire Life magazine, took some time out to visit our studio and have a chat. Here's a sneak peek of what's in store for you. For the full episode of Win All Life, as well as award-winning news and sport, make sure you log on to www.winall.co.uk. But for all of us here, goodbye.